Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. I'm here with Samantha Dow, who is a P4 student from Drake University College of Pharmacy. Uh, she is on her last day of rotation. She's finishing up her second block, so a quarter of the way done. And we are going to go and take a look back at how this all came to be, that she's now, gosh, uh, three quarters of a year from finishing up uh, next May. And we're going to kind of figure out how it all happened. So, Samantha, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Guerra. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's start off with uh, what made you pick Drake. Uh, you're from Iowa, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay in Iowa. There are 143 colleges out there. What made you stay in town to, to go to Drake? Sure. Well, I'm going to take you all the way back to my senior year of high school. I attended uh, Urbandale High School, and I graduated 2013. Um, and I really credit Urbandale with having a strong science department. Um, I had really good teachers. I took advanced chemistry, advanced biology. I took a physics course in my senior year. And so I felt really uh, strong and confident in my science background and decided that that was something I was interested in going into. Uh, so I applied to two schools, um, Drake University being the one that I ultimately chose. But I also applied to Iowa State University. Um, if I happened to get into ISU, I was going to major in chemistry. I figured that chemistry was a really broad field, um, and with me not having a clear idea of what I wanted to do, I thought that chemistry would open up a lot of doors um, and have a lot of opportunities for me in the future. Um, but as you know, I ultimately did get accepted to the pre-pharmacy program at Drake, and so uh, fall of 2013, I started at Drake, uh, went through the two years of pre-pharmacy, uh, four years of professional program, and now here I am in my APPE year. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, how you actually found pharmacy uh, that early. Um, I'd never been in a pharmacy besides getting medicine from a pharmacist. Uh, I was going the pre-med route. Uh, if you look on television, not a ton of pharmacists on television shows. Uh, how did you know that pharmacy was a career, and how did you know about it? Um, again, wanting to go into a field, uh, you know, strongly influenced by science, I looked at pharmacy as a way to get into the healthcare profession without being a doctor, as <laughs> a lot of students uh, have Is that mentality. Is it the fluids? That's a big, that's a big thing. <laughs> I don't, don't want to draw blood. I don't okay. want to work with blood. Um, yeah. Actually, I really do credit my father with uh, suggesting pharmacy and encouraging me to go into that field. Um, you know, Dr. Gary, you've been really open in your other podcasts about your father being a first-generation <laughs> yeah. immigrant from Peru. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So my father is a first-generation immigrant from Vietnam. And this will sound very cliched, but that whole mentality of, you know, pharmacy is a really good profession. You got to either be a pharmacy, a lawyer, or a doctor, or something like that. <laughs> um, and so I really credit my father with encouraging me to pursue a field that was going to be challenging, but he was confident that I would be able to be successful uh, with that background in science. And also being from Urbandale, being from the Des Moines area, um, you know, even if you're not an expert in healthcare or you have real ties to pharmacy, you know that Drake University has a good pharmacy program. And so with Drake being right in my backyard, I thought, you know, I could commute to school every day, save some money um, by saving on room and board. And so that's uh, how I ended up at Drake. Okay, well, um, when my dad and I had our goodbye, he dropped me off at the airport and I could not wait to get out of the house uh, at 18. And and then they sold my car. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, Dad, where's my car? Oh, <laughs> we sold it. We figured you wouldn't need it, college boy. Uh, so tell me a little bit about um, deciding to stay with your family and stay at home and, and make those decisions. Uh, they did create a pharmacy school near where I lived, about six miles away. Now it's gone again. Uh, but uh, what's it like uh, getting to stay with your family and, and having that family support throughout your college career? Of course, as a student, it's been really helpful to have, you know, a place to go home to, having meals and laundry and that kind of thing taken care of. But my family has always been really supportive uh, in knowing how much effort it does take to get through pharmacy school. Um, even to this day, if it's 
there's a blizzard outside. My dad is like, hey, do you want to ride to school? And I'm like, dad, I'm an adult. I think I'll have to learn how to drive through does the snow. Does he drop you off at Cal's? Is that, is that like, like so everybody can see? Is that he, right in front? He would definitely do it if I allowed him to. <laughs> um, but yeah, having that family to support you and, um, you know, they know how stressful it does get at times. And so when I either need time alone or I do need some support to help figure out, you know, what my next step is going to be, they're always there for me, and I really appreciate them doing that for me. Well, Urbandale's a pretty big high school. Uh, Drake is not a very big school. Uh, it's about 5,000, I think. My wife went there, graduated from there, absolutely loved it. Um, but tell me a little bit about your decision between ISU and Drake. Uh, you're talking about an individual department at 5,000 people at Iowa State where you would have uh, classrooms of hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, what made you choose um, having a smaller, smaller liberal arts college uh, rather than uh, the bigger public, which was probably a little bit cheaper? Um, so yeah, uh, part of my decision to apply to Iowa State in the first place was that my older sister attended Iowa State okay. and graduated. <laughs> uh, she majored in art and design, which you know, has so many opportunities <laughs> once you graduate. Um, that design college is no joke, though. It's it tough. is not. It, you, you've got to do portfolio. You might not get accepted to the next step. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, once I was accepted to both schools, another huge factor that went into my decision to go to Drake was that Drake offers Japanese as a foreign language. Cool. Um, I mentioned that my father is originally from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, my mother is Japanese-American, and so I had grown up with both cultures being very influential in my life um, and yet I did not grow up speaking either language oh. and so the ability to uh, go to a school and take formal classes in a language that I had personal interest in was uh, huge for me. Okay yeah my parents taught me uh, Spanish and then they they assumed that the schools would teach me English so anyway it just made for an interesting kindergarten experience <laughs> uh, but Okay, so you've, you've gotten to, I can't believe you've gotten, but you, you're, you've arrived at Drake, uh, you start with pre-pharmacy, uh, but tell me a little bit about that because uh, so many pre-pharmacy students struggled to do it in two years. How is it that you get it done in two years? I feel like you guys are doing like mental squats and push-ups and leg lifts and all these things. Like, How do you keep on track? I think that's the hardest thing for a pre-pharmacy student to do. Uh, again, I had a strong background in biology and chemistry already, and so to be completely honest, that first freshman year uh, was a lot of review for myself. Oh. I was very fortunate that that's how it turned out. Um, but again, I mentioned I took Japanese as a foreign language, and that really helped me through the stress and the organization of dealing with classes. Um, you know, I took these pre-pharmacy courses to prepare myself uh, in science and for the professional program, but I also had Japanese as kind of that fun class that was a de-stressor. I, I don't. You, let me let me stop you there. So you're you're going from the Roman alphabet, which has 26 letters, to a character-based language, and that's relaxing. I, I just help me out. <laughs> yeah. So I, as I said, I'm f familiar with the culture, okay. but I was familiar with the language as well. Um, I took four years of Japanese in high school, okay. which I found that four years of a foreign language in high school equals about one year at the college level. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I skipped the beginner level uh -huh. of Japanese and went directly to the intermediate level. Um, but again, because I had that personal interest in it, you know, I had that motivation to study and get better and uh, use it uh, in my daily life. Um, it was very fulfilling and worthwhile. Okay. So. Okay. Well, right now, there are certain pharmacy schools that have maybe a single class in English or a couple of classes in English, really don't focus on the humanities. Uh, I'm really jealous that my wife and that you got to go to a liberal arts college where there's an emphasis on languages, an emphasis on the humanities, social sciences. Uh, tell me a little bit about how it is being in classes that are very writing intensive, uh, really intensive in terms of discussion uh, as it relates to pharmacy and working with patients? Uh, so one of the main emphases is... Uh, emphases, <laughs> emphases. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, is patient counseling. And yeah. so uh, as students, we have to be able to understand the material that's presented in lecture, but then turn around and take those terms, use them uh, so that lay people would be able to understand and communicate the information that we've learned in a way that can be understood by patients. 
Um, and so there is an emphasis on, you know, hypertension is the term that we'll use in class. But when you're talking to patients, you should say high blood pressure. Right. Um, you know, education is everything. And even if the healthcare professional knows this information, if they're not able to communicate that to their patients, it's the same as not receiving treatment. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So we've moved from our, our P1 to P2 year. Tell me a little bit about uh, being with other students during pre-pharmacy. I think one of the things that really is a struggle for many pre-pharmacy students is that they're leaning towards pre-pharmacy, but also pre-med, pre-nursing, pre-physical therapy, maybe dentistry, you know, all these different things. Uh, how, how do you keep in touch with other pre-pharmacy students? Are there classes at Drake uh, and things like that, that that keep you on track uh, and keep you connected to other people? I think it really comes down to the role and understanding the role of the pharmacist within the professional health care team. Um, a lot of people go in thinking that they want to get into healthcare eventually, but they're not sure exactly which role is the best for them. And students pretty quickly come to find that pharmacists are the drug experts. You're going to have to know drug names, side effects, uh, exact roles in medication management. And if that just doesn't quite fit what the student wants to accomplish <laughs> in their careers, then, you know, they're going to be... Uh, encouraged to pursue something yeah, yeah. else but just knowing um the roles and the difference in roles of different healthcare professionals i think is a key okay so i think that many many students after they finish their pre-farm year and then uh the transfers come in they're really kind of like what's next what's the real difference between pre-pharmacy and pharmacy uh you obviously did it on the same campus but what was that big change from the from the pre two year to the P one year? Uh, I would say the biggest difference is that uh, pre-pharmacy at Drake um, does emphasize the role of the pharmacist and it uh, informs the students what exactly they're going to be doing as professionals in uh, the field of pharmacy. Um, there is an introduction to these are, these are the kinds of interactions you'll have with patients. These are the kinds of skills that are necessary to be a pharmacist. Uh, so without even getting into specific drug names or drug classes, um, students have an idea of what is going to be expected of them. And so once you get into the professional program, then there is that change to this is the exact information that you'll need to learn. Um, you are going to have to be a lifelong learner. As we all know, medicine changes very, very quickly. Yeah. So accepting that the things that you learn today might not even be applicable tomorrow that's hurtful. Yeah. So, especially when you're 20 years out, I, I, I hear all the time. So was your NAPLEX between aspirin and Tylenol? Or were those the two choices? You know, but, but no. And, and so, you know, you did the top 200 maybe in your P1 year, and then you find that there's like 40 of them are different. So, so definitely the flexibility and ability to change. So from P1 to P2, what's the big change? I always hear P2 year is brutal. I found it to be the toughest. Uh, what is it about that second year you should be a veteran, but it actually ends up being really hard. Yeah, and uh, I think that the, you know, the difficulty of the material doesn't even change that much. Um, and if you look at what we learn in classes, I don't find the material to be difficult at all. Um, the problem is that I think the professors are trying to fit too much content into a certain <laughs> amount of time. Yeah. So, you know, I can learn an entire chapter of a textbook in one week if you, you know, give, you give me week. that whole week. But you have if a day. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I think that's where students struggle the most is uh, knowing what information is going to be most relevant. Of course, as students, we want to know what information is going to be on the test. Um, but I found that if I approach learning as you know, I'm going to learn this information for the exam, but in the future, when the situation arises, uh, how can I learn the information so that I just need a refresher and the information is going to come back to me more quickly? That's how I've approached learning, and I think it's been uh, really helpful to me to think in that way instead of just the short term, what's okay. going to be on the exam. Okay. Okay, as you went from P2 year um, to P3 year, uh, you really go from somebody who's being the learner to kind of being more of a mentor, not only to the patients, but maybe to other classmates. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you started your teaching role, and then we'll talk a little bit about the academic rotation itself that you're in now. So as I mentioned before, teaching involves a lot of communication and being able to take 
existing information and say it in a way that someone else is going to understand. That's the basics of communication. Um, I found that most students uh, in pharmacy uh, simultaneously work in a pharmacy setting, whether that is a community retail setting or in a hospital. Um, and so just having that experience working with patients in more of a real life situation rather than a simulated yeah. you know, case example that is presented in class um, really educates students on how to best present information to other people that don't have the same background as them, um, how to present that information in a way that is understandable, and also what to expect when that patient turns around and either indicates that they do understand what you just said or they don't um, in a way that is you know, problem solving all on its own and uh, finding new ways to come to the desired solution um, in, you know, getting around ways that didn't work before. I think that's something that's uh, tough for me, at least. Uh, my wife is definitely a listener. I'm definitely a talker. Uh, what cues do you look for in the patient that you know they need to hear it again? Um, of course, verbal communication <laughs> skills is great, so the patient might just say, you know, that was a lot of information you just went over. I didn't quite get everything. Could you please repeat? <laughs> I That's... don't know if that ever happens. <laughs> It'd be nice, but their face might say it or something like that. But how do you uh, kind of get, how do you kindly say, did you, did you understand that or, you know, those kinds of things? Yeah, and so uh, within pharmacy school and then also within this uh, non-patient care academic rotation. I've been taught to utilize um, motivational interviewing um, using open-ended questions to ask uh, what other questions do you have instead mm -hmm. of do you have any other questions. Right. Um, ensuring that you have to get a more complete response from the patient rather than a simple yes or no uh, really helps gauge that patient's understanding. Okay, all right, so let's take it to the uh, APPE rotation. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, your first time getting in front of a, a larger classroom. Uh, how did you prepare for it? And then um, how did you feel while you were up there? I know many students want to be uh, academics or want to be in front of the classroom, uh, but sometimes getting what you want is, uh, is a little bit challenging. Um, I've always been more on the shy side. I really didn't like getting up in front of the class and speaking during <laughs> okay. public speaking class or speech class. Um, but I came to a point where I realized, you know, I'm a little bit uncomfortable uh, getting up in front of large groups and speaking. But there are other people who are even more uncomfortable than me who <laughs> okay, hate this okay. even more. So I put yourself in the middle yes, of the pack. All right. Selfishly decided <laughs> that if I show, you know, a little bit more confidence that uh, other people are going to view me as a good speaker, even if I don't always view myself as a good speaker. Um, so again, having more experiences getting up in front of people, um, building that confidence has really helped me to be able to deliver the message that I want to deliver. Okay. And you had a little bit of a curveball thrown at you. you. You ended up planning a wedding along with your uh, fourth year. So tell me a little bit about uh, doing something monumental like that. There are many people who do get married during their um, P4 year or P3 year, have children, uh, all these things. Uh, how did you, one, balance your life, but two, also provide uh, great support for your sister during her time? Yeah, so just to clarify, it's not my own wedding. It was my older sister's <laughs> wedding. Okay, sorry. Um, but yes, yeah, she asked if I would be a bridesmaid, more specifically her maid of honor. Um, and so, of course, I'm going to say yes yeah. to the opportunity. <laughs> Um, but it is, it gets very busy during the APPE year to have these other major events come up. And so uh, having that work-life balance, as many professionals stress, is important to them. Um, yeah, being able to spend adequate amount of time uh, at my uh, rotation site, doing the tasks that my preceptor asks of me, and then being able to go home and also figure out all these other major decisions, <laughs> such as what flavor cake should I have, or <laughs> where should pictures be taken? Yeah, You know, both aspects um, are very, very important to me, and I make sure that I have time to accomplish both. Okay. All right. Well, let's look a little bit towards the future. You've got uh, six more uh, rotations. You're a quarter of the way there. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you're looking forward to next and uh, what kind of experiences you have. Did you do more of a 
you're kind of creating a, a nice buffet where you're going to have different experiences to choose from? Or did you create a very specific line of uh, courses in APPE that uh, you wanted to follow? Even now, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with my PharmD degree. Um, as I mentioned before, I have the most experience in community pharmacy settings, and so I do like that direct patient interactions um, and feeling that I accomplished something by uh, making a patient's experience with the healthcare system positive. Uh, more specifically, my next rotation is a specialty compounding site. Um, compounding is something that I've been interested in from the beginning, but didn't have the opportunity to take an elective okay. or learn more specifically about it. Um, I have an interest in compounding because, you know, you're compounding products that are not commercially available. So you have one individual patient with a very specific need, and they need a product that's going to fulfill that need. And so that goes back to the, you know, the original roots of pharmacy and mixing things and grinding up plants <laughs> and, you know, using those properties. But... Let me go out back and see if we've got that plant, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I feel that's really the ultimate in uh, personalized patient care. You know, you're creating a product that's going to be used by one patient. Um, you're creating that product with that one patient in mind. And so I feel that is, um, as the profession moves towards, um, you know, personalized patient, one-on-one -on -one care, that that really is the ultimate in the concept. Cool. All right. Well, I've asked you a lot of questions. Uh, is there anything you want to make sure that maybe the students that are following you uh, learn or get to know from your six years at Drake? Uh, it seems like you had a great experience. You, you got through everything, and uh, it sounds like you really enjoyed being there, and now you get to kind of enjoy just kind of seeing what's out there. Um, anything you want to say to those students that are going to follow you? Yeah, in my experience, I would say um, among my peers, uh, people either know exactly what they want to do while they're going <laughs> to pharmacy school or yeah. they're like me and they really have no idea. Um, but having no idea doesn't mean that you're lost. And that's why the last APPE year is so great, um, because you get to experience all these new uh, settings and different sites, and you really get to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So I would recommend that students always keep an open mind, if, even if you do think you know what you want to do. Uh, you never know what's out there. I've learned that there's a lot more that you can do with a PharmD degree than just be in a community setting or a hospital. Um, so pursue whatever you're interested in and just see where it takes you. Yeah, we really have a lot in common. I have that multi multicultural background myself, my, my dad from Peru and my mom from here. But uh, in terms of figuring out what I wanted to do with my, my life afterwards, I was very much like you. I went to, to Arizona just actually to take a break. I, I squished all of one of my APPE electives together so that I could we, – we only had to do like three weeks out of five or something like that so I could go to Arizona in August. Uh, and even in August, I was like – I was going to go to Arizona, then to California, you know, deciding where maybe I might might want to go. And I just loved it so much, I canceled the California part of it. Stayed in Arizona and said, I think I'll work here. So uh, I, I definitely, uh, for, for the type A's in pharmacy, I know that is so tough that I just want to know. I just, I just want a curriculum after school, you know. Yes. And, and I feel like that's the greatest growth. That's the greatest ability. Uh, just like our conversation now, there's no script. There are no questions. There's nothing. Uh, you're doing everything off the cuff. And I just am so impressed at how responsive you are to just, just kind of letting it go in the last year and seeing where things take you. Well, I wanted to first thank you so much for working so hard these last five weeks. Uh, our students really benefited from having you. Um, you brought a lot of originality and a lot of fun to the classroom that I'm kind of embarrassed I didn't. Uh, I didn't come up with some of that stuff, but it will be my own by the by three blocks from now. So, uh, but some of the memes and some of the the videos and some of the things that really connected you with the students. So thank you for that. Um, but uh, if any students maybe wanted to contact you or get in touch with you, is there a way that they could uh, contact you, or what what's your best way to be contacted? Absolutely. I still have my Drake email, and so I will give it to you to put in the podcast description. Okay. Um, other than that, just. Uh, Give the experiential office at Drake a call. <laughs> Hopefully we can get in touch. Sounds good. All right. Thanks so much for being in the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach with over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia 
it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. 